Good evening. Before we start the meeting, we're going to uh, read today's, tonight's quote. Uh, for the last several meetings, I have been reading those quotations, almost taking credit for them. I, sh uh, I think uh, the credit is due to Madam City Clerk Sue Richards. She comes up with these wonderful quotations for us to, to ponder on. And what I have decided to do, that instead of me reading the quotations, that she should read the quotations from here on. So I will ask her to read the quotation before we start. Madam City Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Appreciate everything people do for the organization. Nothing else can quite substitute for a few well-chosen, well-timed, sincere words of praise. They're absolutely free and worth a fortune. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. I'll call the 21st regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll, Madam City Clerk. Bauman. Here. D. Berg. Here. E. Berg. Excuse. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Graf. Here. Kittleson. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Sagali. Here. Stefan. Excuse. Susha. Here. Van Akron. Here. And Vanderweel. Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Davis, would you please lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Davis. Alderman Groff, minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting and the same stand approved is entered on the record. There's a motion, there's a second. 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 Under discussion, there being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, <laughs> minutes stand approved. Resignations. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first one is uh, dated January 26th. Uh, dear Mayor Perez, I'm resigning from the Sheboygan Library Board of Trustees effective immediately. Um, and this is from Susan Hunley. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. So moved. There's, there's a second. Any discussion on the resignation? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation is accepted. Next is uh, dated January 23rd to uh, the Honorable Mayor Perez. Let it be known in effect of February 1, 2006, I'll resign from the Sheboygan Commission on Aging. Uh, Jerry Hempsing. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. With some move. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. Uh, the next is dated uh, January 6th. Dear Mayor Perez, with regret I must resign from my appointment to the city's board of review. Recently married and moved out of the city to the town of Sheboygan. Therefore, can no longer serve on the committee. Signed, Ed Gennaro. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. So moved. Motion second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. And the last one is dated January 18th uh, to dear Mayor Perez. And this is from Sue Dennis advising that uh, she's resigning from the library board. Uh, she's the school, Sporting School District representative and indicates she'll attend the board meetings until a replacement's named in the immediate future. I ask for a motion to accept and file. So moved. Second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. Uh, for the appointments, hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Daniel Castro to be considered for appointment to the Board of Review to fill the unexpired term of Edward Gennaro, whose term expires 4307, signed by the mayor. That will lie over. Mary Liz Town to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Sue Dennis, whose term expires 43007. And there's uh, attached, there's a letter from the uh, superintendent of schools, uh, Mr. Sheehan, advising that uh, he's requesting that Ms. Town be uh, appointed as the 
school district's designee. As an additional note, this is a representative from the school district that is generally the superintendent. In the event that the superintendent does not wish to be a member, he will designate someone. And this has been his designation, and that will lie over. Charlene Dickey to be considered for appointment to the Housing Authority to fill the unexpired term of Yolanda Groff, whose term expires 4-30-08, signed by the mayor. That will lie over. And David Gallianetti to be considered for appointment to the Library Board to fill the unexpired term of Susan Hunley, whose term expires 4-30-08, signed by the mayor. That will lie over. And on confirmation of appointments, <clears throat> There is the list of election officials. Um, goes on for a number of pages. This was brought in at the last council meeting. This is for election inspectors for all elections in 2006. And these appointments are pursuant at the uh, request of Madam City Clerk Sue Richards. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. A second. Any discussion? There will be a none. All those in favor, state aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments are confirmed. Is that it? Thank you, Chairman McLean. Public forum, Madam Clerk. Okay. <clears throat> First on the list is Carter Paulus. Carter, if you could give me your home address, please. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Tonight's subject is problems and solutions. Sorry. Right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Start over, please. I missed you. Wait. Start over. Start over. Okay. Thank you. Tonight's sorry. subject is problems and solutions. About a year ago, the citizens elected Mayor Juan Perez to bring government back to the people, remove and lower unfair taxation, and make our government more accountable. Almost nothing has happened except save Sheridan Park and some increased public openness. The Common Council's performance is unacceptable. The solution is to remove those aldermen that refuse adamantly to cooperate in any way with the mayor at every turn by their votes. That's why there are 26 citizens running to replace them. We need to elect a council that will perform. There is a problem with the library board trustees not performing according to law and ordinances in several areas. The solution is for the common council to remove those library trustees from the office forthwith for malfeasance of office or elect a council that will perform. The lack of performance by our city attorney is inadequate. He doesn't in, even include the mayor in his pronouncements and runs his elected position to his own agenda and not to the city. The solution is to elect a new, young, smart, hungry attorney or change the legal entity now existent to another form of accountability by the common council. The problem with our department heads is a complete lack of accountability in their performance, spending, and conduct. Do you have a few days for this litany? The solution is for the Common Council to pass ordinances that make them accountable and get the politics out of the business of the city or elect a council that will perform. The problem of the two most important and expensive entities of our city is police and fire. The lack of cooperation and continued growth is astounding. Power corrupts. The solution is to replace the police commissioner with the most disappointing record in our history with one that is accountable to the city by ordinance. Another solution is to make it clear to the unions that we can no longer afford their extravagant demands or they will be replaced with a completely new system that might include a regional fire and enforcement authority by the Common Council. Other solutions against waste in all areas include shared taxes, 
You wanted solutions? Quite frankly, the taxpayers of the city demand no less. Thank you. Thank you, Carter. Next on the list is Chris Ross. Chris, could you give me your home address, please? 640 Mark Ave, Sheboygan Falls. 640, I'm sorry? <clears throat> Mark Avenue, Sheboygan Falls. Mark Avenue? Yes. And you'll have five minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. I have developed an interest in the Mead Public Library after hearing about some of the struggles in the local news. My interest had compelled me to study some of the things that, some of the changes that were implemented by our library ball board in this transition period. As I'm sure, as everyone is aware, recent budget cuts resulted in a decline of services offered at the library and led Director Sharon Winkle to question the security of her position as director. I agree with the library board's perspective that strong leadership is required for this transition period. After performing some research, I believe there are some things Sharon can do to improve the quality of service at Mead Library without stretching resources. I'd like to take a moment to explain how I came to this conclusion. To me, the first step in attempting to understand the issue is to define and measure the factors that influence it. With that in mind, I use an organization that is dedicated to measuring the services a library provides. Hennon's American Public Library Ratings, or HAPLAR for short, annually performs such a function. Mead Library did not make the top 10 list. I decided to focus on the number one library in Mead's population category, the Washington Centerville Public Library of Ohio, in an attempt to learn how to measure excellence. I'd like to share what I found. Cynthia Klink, the director of the number one rated library in the country in our population category, started with a budget of $660,000 and a staff of seven and built a library that boasts a circulation of 2.2 million items per year. Her library also started over 60 programs designed to educate and enrich her community. Her community recognized her ac excellence this year by including her in the Dayton's Top 10 Women of 2005. Cynthia has written books and articles about how to improve the library without spending money, a talent she seems to have mastered. She started programs that include seminars conducted by high school chemistry students for preschoolers, illustrating how science can be more amazing than magic. She has facilitated groups designed to promote literacy among minorities as well as workshops for minorities designed to help them start small businesses. Programs like these, run by volunteers, she has often personally recruited, have had a measurable effect on her community's economy and general well-being. I also wanted to mention some interesting statistics I discovered when I compared the Washington Centerville's annual report with Meads. Mead has more money to spend per cardholder than the number one library. Mead has more money to spend per employee than the number one library. And despite this disparity of funding, the Washington Centerville Library has extended their hours while Mead has not only reduced theirs, but has reduced public access to reference librarians and popular material staff. Circulation at the Washington Centerville Library has continued to skyrocket while in 2004, Mead's declined. Washington Centerville has made it a priority to contribute to the local interlibrary loan program while Mead has begun to remove groups of items from our interlibrary loan system. It is also my understanding that Cynthia, along with the other Ohio directors, do not operate under contract. It also might be worth mentioning that four of the top ten libraries in Mead's category are from Ohio. Comparing Sharon's salary and Cynthia's was also interesting. I hope to include these figures in an information source I will soon discuss. Cynthia's dedication to continuous improvement led to further reduction in labor hours needed to run the library. But instead of reorganizing positions and reducing staff, she used those hours to, in the creation of more community programs and opportunities to improve service in the future. Cynthia's standing in the community makes it easy for her to approach people and organizations in the community for donations of time and money. People in her community respect and appreciate the work she is doing. My curiosity has also brought me to last week's library board meeting. I'm glad I went because it gave me an opportunity to listen to what Alderman Manny had to say. I believe Mr. Manny is an intelligent, talented individual who is turning his high regard for his community into action by participating on both the library board and the common council. 
I believe it takes more than money to create a success like the one illustrated in Ohio. I believe it also takes a vision. I feel that some of the members of the library board also demonstrated that type of vision last week, but I did not see it demonstrated by our director. I'm here tonight to ask the library board and the common council to recognize the need for its department heads to be held accountable for not only their behavior, but for their professional performance as well. Perhaps the council and the board can consider a system of metrics in order to improve the library's performance through this period of transition. When I say metrics, I mean to look at a set of measurable... Excuse me, Chris. Oh. Your time is up. Okay, thank you. There's a motion second to allow how many minutes? Till he completes. Oh, thank you. Wait, hold on, excuse me, sir. Up to, up to two minutes, motion to allow up to two minutes to complete his statements. All those, second, all those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please continue, Mr. Thank you. Ross. Um, I'm here tonight to ask the library board and the common council to recognize the need for its department heads to be held accountable. In conclusion, I would like to offer members of the council the sources of the facts I've referred to, along with some examples of the topics I use to illustrate my concerns. I plan to post this information on a website along with Meads and the top 10 Haplar Library's annual reports. I'm gonna to try to post um, links to articles I found about Cynthia, the 2005 Woman of the Year, as well as articles regarding, that she wrote regarding to how to improve library services without spending money. I'd also like to include and discuss methodologies, methodologies of process improvement designed to improve service and decrease costs at the same time. Um, and for that, I'd like to thank the Common Council for its time. Thank you, Chris. And last on the list, <clears throat> excuse me, is Dimple Adams. Dimple, can I have your home address, please? Uh, yes, it's 1424 Virginia Avenue. And you will have five minutes. Okay, thanks, Susan. Can you give me a heads up when I'm about a minute away? Sure. Thank you. Um, I, I like this, um, appreciate everything people do for the organization, and nothing else can quite substitute for a few well-chosen, well-timed, sincere words of praise. They're absolutely free and worth a fortune. I'm afraid we haven't been getting a lot of that lately in our city government. Words of praise for all the hard work that um, everybody does. And I do believe that everybody works very hard, um, including Mayor Perez, including the council, including uh, the city clerk and our attorney and all the other department heads, um, such as the police chief and um, the fire chief and public works and so forth. I, I have all the faith in the world that all of you sincerely work very, very hard. I have, um, what I don't have is a lot of trust that some of your efforts are maybe directed in the right way because, because of that statement. Um, I don't hear a lot of praise. When I can hear someone slam alder persons as we have seen in the paper, as we have heard on the radio, and make them personal, then I have a problem with that. It creates a lot of disrespect in my book. I respect every one of you. I respect the position that you hold. I don't agree with all of you, but I respect the office that you hold. But I don't trust all of you anymore. And I'm not going to name names. You probably know who I trust and who I don't. <clears throat> but it, it's hard to trust an organization, too, that um, has members, an organization that's supposed to be non-political, an organization that's nonprofit, that has involved itself in every major issue that we've had the past year. They have gotten up here and they have complained about all the money that's spent and I think needed at times. They have complained about, they have used every source available to them to get their message out. They've used the newspaper, they've used the radio, they've used this public forum, they've used letters to the editor, 
to slam personal altar persons, but yet they are, quote, non-political. I don't see how you can have it both ways. And last week was a perfect example of that. For three months, they had caused this brouhaha over the library situation. Now, I don't know Mrs. Winkle personally, but I intend to get to know her because I believe her. I have no reason not to believe that she thought that she might need something in writing to protect her job because this, quote, non-political organization had been slamming her for three months or better. Okay, so we have a big mess. We thought we had it solved when we had the news conference. And everybody was like, okay, maybe, maybe this is gonna be okay. And then all of a sudden, now we have a brouhaha over an amendment that was in that agreement that our city attorney was not involved in coming to the, to the um, compromise. But now he's being blamed for not getting the word out. One minute, Temple. To the, ma to the mayor. I don't understand this. You know, when I was a child, the first president that I can remember was President Truman. And my mom and my pop always said, you know, the buck stops here. With everything that goes on, the buck stops here. And I do not see Attorney McLean as being where the buck should have stopped with this issue because he wasn't involved in the compromise. And I think that those in charge have got to take that on. Thank you. Thank you, Dimple. That's it. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. And Mr. Paulus, Mr. Ross, Mr. Adams, thank you very much for addressing the council tonight. Because some issues were raised regarding the library uh, situation, I think it's important for me to speak on, on that particular issue in effort to <coughs> clarify um, some of the misunderstandings, perhaps. There appears, first let me say this, when I, when I became mayor, I knew perfectly well that all my political enemies, my critics, chronic complainers, were going to intensely scrutinize everything I said or didn't say, everything I did or didn't do. I haven't been surprised, that's occurring. The beauty of all this, the beauty of all this, is that that is what open government is all about. Just like making sausage. I told my staff this morning, it's like making sausage. The process is ugly and nasty, but the product is such a wonderful product. Open government is not nice, folks. It's nasty sometimes. I would wish that it wouldn't be, and I would ask that everyone who participate in open government not make it nasty and ugly and disrespectful. I would ask that we address the issues and take away the personalities. Attack the issue, don't attack the person. When the library board decided to grant Sharon Winkle a contract, there was an issue as to where they could, they had that power or not. My understanding, and speaking to Attorney McLean, my understanding uh, from the Department of Public Instruction, which I believe every one of you have a copy of this, is that yes, the library board has the power, the authority, the autonomy to grant that kind of a contract. We have nothing to do with that. The council has nothing to do with that. It's easy and it's tempting. It's so tempting to want to micromanage and say, you can't do that. It's not our jurisdiction. There's a lot of things I don't agree in the county and the school district. They have that authority, I don't. So we need to be careful and very mindful of how far our authority extends. When that contract was issued, there were some concerns raised about certain 
elements, certain stipulations in the contract, dealing with the five-year contract, dealing with the sick leave, and so forth. I, as mayor, took it upon myself as I would any time, and I would do it again in, in the snap of a finger. It's my responsibility to meet with my department heads. I have that responsibility, and no one can take that away from me. I spoke with Ms. Winkle, and I asked her, can you look at your contract again? Can we make it better for the community, make it better for all those that are concerned? She was willing to do that, and I thank her for that. That took a lot of courage on her part. It took a lot of willingness because she had a contract already. I never negotiated anything with her. There's been issues raised that I negotiated. I never negotiated anything with her. I never agreed to any agreement. You don't see my name signed anywhere. I have that right and responsibility to meet with my department heads and ask that they work through a problem area where it affects them because that area affects me too, it affects you, the council. We worked through that process. She agreed to reopen her contract and make some changes. Thus, the amendments. During those casual conversations, yes, there was a one person involved that wasn't a city employee. That's a good friend of uh, Ms. Winkle, a good friend of mine. Marilyn Donahue, she loves the library. She loves the library. She was concerned because there was so much uproar and she wanted to make some sort of effort to work things out. And she asked, can we work, talk it over? Fine, I'll do it any time. It, it has nothing to do with contractual obligations of the city. During the course of that conversation, it was mentioned that if the amendments were passed and the council, or even myself, proceeded to try to remove the board members that voted for it, that she would say, I won't agree to those amendments. My position is, it doesn't matter. You could agree to, if it doesn't snow the next three months, I'll withdraw my amendments. That's her way of rationalizing why she's agreeing to open the contract to look at the problem areas. That's the way I understood it, that's the way it was. When we came here together, she sat there, I sat here, she made her announcements, she agreed to reopen the contract, look at it, and she did. It was never once mentioned that there was gonna be a stipulation that would revert the contract if certain, and certain things occurred. I thought, I believed, that was it. I heard in the community, good enough for us, let's move on. It turns out that there was a draft prepared, I believe Wednesday, uh, the 25th of January. I got a copy of that draft of the amendments at about 9.30, I believe, a.m. from Attorney McLean. About 9.30. I looked at it, I opened it, and I said, oh, it's another one of those agreements. I'll look at it a little bit later on. It was such a busy day, but lately every day is busy for me. Later on, I remembered at about th almost 3 o'clock, I emailed Attorney McLean and said, I haven't had a chance to look at this. It's been a very busy day. I'll look at it later. I didn't. If I made a mistake because I didn't, I'm sorry, but I didn't. There's a lot of emails, a lot of agreements I don't look at right away. That was one of them. There's a lot of them before, and there's going to be a lot of them in the future. I didn't open it. I didn't read it. Within that hour span, I went to a room tax advisory committee meeting, and we took care of business. And about 10 minutes before 5, the meeting was over, and I had in my mind, I need to talk to Attorney McLean because he had emailed me. So I went into his office. He had someone there. I waited a little bit. The person left. I went in, and I asked, what is the deal? And there was two concerns that Attorney McLean had. One is the two-year automatic rollover. And the other one was, who pays for that contract? If the worst should happen, and Ms. Winkle were to be let go, who is obligated to make that final lump sum payment? My thoughts were the council. Attorney McLean's thought, no, because the library board and the president don't have the power to bind the common council with contractual obligations. I asked, is there anything else? 
there wasn't. The next day I was going to be on, I was going to be out of town Thursday and Friday. Quite frankly, folks, I was anxious to go on. I had, a, I had a long day and I'm ready to rumble. I took off and that was it. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I did. People want to blame me for that. I'll take all the, I'll accept all the blame. People want me to apologize for that. I apologize. <coughs> there was no malice, no evil intent, no nothing. The next day is when Attorney McLean actually got a revision. And I believe what he indicated to me is that that's when he noticed that that particular clause was there. Goes back and looks at the other clause. Yes, it's there. And that was the day that the library board was going to prove it. And they did. And there was an article in the paper about this extra kicker. That's when I read it because I started getting telephone calls from some aldermen and some people. I didn't know it was going to be part of the contract. I'll say it again. I did not know it was going to be part of the contract. If I'm to blame because I didn't read it, and I'll accept that blame. But don't blame Attorney McLean. Don't blame the library board. Don't blame the library director. I will accept that blame. If anybody is to accept blame, I will take it. Attorney McLean is a very competent, decent attorney. He's a <clears throat> decent man. We may not agree sometimes, but he impresses me. And his heart is in Sheboygan. His heart is in this city government. Anybody that questions that, I'll be glad to debate with you. Sharon Winkle is not to blame. She was looking out for her best interest, like we all do. Sharon Winkle is a very intelligent woman. She's a wonderful woman, a professional, committed to the library. She's given a lot of her life to the library, and I have high respect for her. <coughs> if anybody is to blame, blame me. I will take the blame. I have taken it already. I have been called a liar. We have witnessed an, an unfortunate, unfortunate surge of just political attacks, personal <coughs> attacks against me. I'll take those too. That's okay with me. But there's no need for this to continue. There's no need for this to go on. We need to get going. The library board is within its own authority. You are within your authority. You do have the power to remove them. You do have the power to appropriate. Quite frankly, that's about the extent of it. When I make appointments, if you don't like them, don't confirm them. When the budget comes in for the library, approve it or don't approve it. That's the extent of our involvement. There comes a time when we need to let individual Boards and commissions do their job without micromanaging everything they do. We've got the water utility. That's an independent commission. We appoint their members. Are we going to go up there and try to tell them how to do it? Housing Authority is another one. Redevelopment Authority. There's all kinds of different commissions and authorities that have autonomy. We also have Alderman Manning, who has been criticized and attacked. Alderman Manning is a man of character and integrity and a good pastor, and his heart is in Sheboygan and is in community. He does not deserve the bashing, just like Attorney McLean does not deserve it, just like Sharon Winkle doesn't deserve it, just like a lot of the board members don't deserve it. Folks, if you want to blame somebody, here I am. And if you want an apology, I'll give it to you. I'm sorry. And I would hope that we could move on. The other criticism that has been in the air lately is that I met with the Taxpayers Alliance. Yes, I did. Secretly. No, I didn't. Privately. Yes, I did. I meet privately with organizations all the time. I meet privately with citizens all the time because they want to discuss issues just with me. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't make something else out of it. There isn't anything there. People will continue to ask me to meet with me privately. And you know what? I'll continue to do it. That's just the way it is. That's the nature of my job. People come in and they want to talk to me. I will talk to them. Some people have asked that I meet them at their homes. I'll go to their homes. 
It's responsive government. I will continue to do that. I have an open door policy, and I will continue to honor it. That is my statement regarding that. I hope that clarifies a lot of those issues regarding the library board. I hope we can move on. I know that there's about seven aldermen who called in, and I didn't know this, but they called in after a barrage of attack from a radio station, and they wanted special meeting. I'm not sure of the committee of the whole or the council. The, the reasons were varied. The library board, the library contract, contractual agreements, questions on library issues, and so forth. I would hope, Alderman, that we don't start doing business out of a radio station. This is where we do business, council chambers. This is where we address the issues, council chambers. People elected us to address issues in the council chambers, not on local radio stations that entertain people. Please honor the, the request of the people and do business in this council chambers. Thank you. Moving on. Before I talk about the MEG unit, healthcare costs, I'd ask for Ms. Kim Swisher to Please step up to the podium. Council, Ms. Kim Swisher is our new manager of tourism. She came in to work not even a month ago and she's doing a wonderful job. She's hit the ground running. The people that have had contact with her are very, very impressed with her. I am very impressed with her. Kim, thank you for the hard work you're already doing. We look forward to great times with you. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kim Swisher and I'm your new manager of tourism for the city of Sheboygan. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here. Um, my husband and I are actually moving to the city next Wednesday, and I've been on the job. This is the beginning of my third week, and I'm still here, and that's great. I've had a chance to tour our lodging properties. I have one yet to visit. I've also had a chance to tour the Kohler Arts Center and the Stephanie Weil Theater and Center for Performing Arts, as well as several other places. And we live in a beautiful community. And we have many things to be proud of, and I look forward to working with you, and I look forward to promoting the heck out of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Mayor. Welcome to the team. Thank you. Meg Unit, we've got a, I'll be asking uh, Chief Kirk to talk to us a little bit about it, and uh, Lieutenant Kirk Brasser. But I just wanted to point out that we've got a, a situation where our MEG unit is in danger of not being funded anymore. And the MEG unit is really a very, very important component of our police uh, department because they deal with heavy drug trafficking. They deal with the heavy drug issue, the illegal drug issue and the trafficking that we have, the drug use that we have in our community. It's getting so bad that our young generation is no longer interested in pot and marijuana. They want the heavy stuff. We are seeing more and more sprouting of drug houses and meth labs and so forth. We need to address that drug problem. I have, and I know Chief Kirk agrees with me, zero tolerance for illegal drug trafficking and drug, illegal drug use. And I will do everything I possibly can. It's within my effort, my authority, to make sure we stomp this problem that haunts our community and our nation, but in particular our community that is destroying not only families, but children, youth. And we cannot allow that to happen. We have an area where we need some money reappropriated. There's a document going into finance. I'd ask the alderman to please consider it, its approval. The chief and I are also putting together a five-year plan. I'm the type of mayor that likes to plan in, in years instead of one year to the other. So we're putting together, Chief and I and uh, Lieutenant Kurt uh, Brasser, put together a five-year plan where we hope that we can weather this bad time, this bad uh, financial times that we have, so that next year when times are rough, and if the following year the times are rough, we'll have that money set aside so we can tackle the drug issue. That is very important to me. That is very important to Chief Kirk, and I support him wholeheartedly on this. Chief Kirk, would you please address the council, sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Common Council. 
I stand here tonight, uh, I want to say thank you for listening, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for listening to the concerns we have, to the details of the problem we see, and for responding. The MEG unit is probably one of the best shared services that we have going in the city of Sheboygan and county of Sheboygan. MEG unit stands for the Sheboygan County Multi-Jurisdictional Drug Enforcement Group. Basically, it's also known as our drug unit. It started way back before I began employment in 1977 in the uh, city of Sheboygan. We took over as lead agency somewhere. The sheriff's department used to uh, run this and be the lead agency. We took over lead agency about 1999, 2000, there about uh, under Chief Eichmann. Uh, the uh, drug unit is one of 26 drug task forces in the state of Wisconsin. And we are, the city as a lead agency is responsible for the administrative, financial, and coordination efforts of this unit. It's comprised or it's directed by an oversight committee. And this oversight committee involves all the chiefs of the agencies that are involved. This is the uh, village of Kohler, Sheboygan Falls, Plymouth, Elkhart Lake, City of Sheboygan Sheriff's Department, the District Attorney's Office, and the State Patrol. It's comprised, the, the drug unit, or the MEG unit, is comprised of the, the City of Sheboygan placing two officers in there, and Lieutenant Kurt Brasser is presently the person in charge of that unit. We also have one other patrol officer who acts as an investigator. Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department puts two people, two uh, detectives in. The city of Plymouth places one officer in this unit. The drug canine uh, unit is handled by Sheboygan Falls, a police officer who assists in our MEG unit. Other cities also put in manpower and funding uh, when need arises. Lieutenant Kurt Brasser is here tonight to answer any of those questions you have as to the operation, as to the, what funding is, is spent in what areas if that comes up. But over the years, what, what we, how we operated this unit is uh, the use of federal uh, grants, and then the state would also put in a, a penalty assessment money. And for example, in the year 2000, this is where the real concern arises. In the year 2000, uh, we received uh, approximately $86,000 in funding uh, from a combination of state and federal sources. Of that $86,000, uh, we returned about $3,800 of those monies uh, because we didn't, we didn't need them. In 2005, we received approximately the same amount of funding, $86,000. And that year, we returned $3,200 uh, last year. We, we were told that since Homeland Security uh, money was the focus of the federal government was uh, looking into Homeland Security, we were told that the Burn Grant, and it's called the Burn Memorial Justice Assistant Grant, uh, which is the federal money we were using, uh, would be getting smaller and smaller, was beginning to dry up. Uh, they said for 2006, you best reevaluate your concerns. So when uh, we were told of this, uh, we got Lieutenant Kurt Brasser in the office and we talked about it. We, we stressed the importance of downsizing as far as our budget. What do we need? How can we get by? And what's the bare minimum now? Uh, tell us and then apply for that, that amount of money. He came back and he applied for $66,000. Of that $66,000 this year, the burn grant money only had $1.9 million to, to give out to the state of Wisconsin. Of those 26 drug uh, task forces, there was over $4 million in request for the operation of these units. As a result of uh, when they determined how to uh, give out this money, 10 of these 26 drug task forces received zero money for 2006. Of the $66,000 we request, re that we requested, we received $26,000 and an additional $10,000 in penalty assessment for approximately uh, $38,000. That, that gives us a loss, a deduction of about $28,000. As soon as we were advised of this in December of 2005, we began to meet with the other agencies, other entities that were part of our task force to uh, determine where are we going with this. Uh, we met over the last several months uh, four or five times. We met with the mayor several times. And once again, I wish to, to say thank you. You speak of a responsive government, and this is going to be one example. Are we responsive to the real need? 
I don't think I need to talk about the uh, concern of drugs in our community. I believe it's our number one problem. I spoke on, on that repeatedly. Um, our city is uh, becoming worse in drugs. I spoke to a person the other day who husbands told her things were getting better. And I think uh, our department has responded to the violence that is uh, addressed with the drug concern. However, the drug concern is becoming larger and larger, and we are dealing more with harder drugs, and we need to respond. And I, I thank you very much for listening to us. Uh, this is a concern. Um, not only in 2006, as we're $28,000 short, I'm not sure what we're going to do once we run dry of that uh, money we we're given. But the real concern begins, and this is where the five-year plan is hugely important, is that in 2007, we've been told to expect a much greater reduction in the, the dollars you're allotted or very possibly zero money from the, the federal and state government. So if we have no money um, in 2007, that's why the plan, five-year plan is huge. And we're asking uh, at this time, once again, uh, please, I believe the, um, I, I provided some, some facts and uh, numbers to the mayor and to the other department heads this morning. We have those if you wish to see those, the, the number of drugs and the amount of drugs that were seized, the number of arrests. We are up in a number of arrests and seizures this year. Uh, so with that, if you have any questions, please fire away. Um, if you have any questions, uh, Lieutenant Kurt Brasser is here. Um, Why don't we let uh, Lieutenant Brasser talk? Uh, I'd ask for a motion to open the floor. He's not a department head. Uh, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Floor is open. Lieutenant Bresser. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I would also like to thank you for, uh, for addressing this issue. Um, it's great to understand that, uh, that you understand the importance of drug enforcement to law enforcement. It's important for everyone to understand that um, drug enforcement affects the overall crime rate of the entire area. Um, even if you're not involved in drugs, you never have been, you don't know anyone involved in drugs, and it's important to understand that you are affected. The violent crimes that we're seeing, the vandalisms, the thefts, the break-ins, much of that is attributed to the drug trade here in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, the numbers often used when you talk about how drugs affect the crime rate is 70 to 80 percent of all crime can be attributed to the drug trade and drug use. So if you're going to be serious about law enforcement and be proactive in law enforcement, which you try to be, um, you need to understand the importance of drug enforcement. Um, a couple other things I'd just like to explain when we're talking about the MEG unit and our funding and our budgeting, we are totally self-sufficient. When we were getting the, uh, the funding from the federal government through the Byrne Grant, that made us totally self-sufficient. That means we paid for everything from our, our vehicle maintenance to our training, our overtime, our part-time secretary, everything except the base salaries of the officers was paid out of that grant. Uh, it's also important to understand that this is not only um, a state issue, this is a national issue. Um, the burn funding is a national program which is being cut. Um, so there's drug task force all over the country that are being dramatically cut, reduced, or eliminated. It's not unique to Wisconsin. And I think uh, we're fortunate this year that we got the money that we did based on our, our success and the, and the fact that the, uh, the Office of Justice Assistance understands our success. And that's why we got the money that we did and a lot of the other task force were cut. No task force in the state of Wisconsin got all the money that they asked for. That's also an important thing to understand. So um, I think we, we fared fairly well for this year, although it's, it's a significant cut. Uh, is there any other questions I would any like to? Any questions for Lieutenant Bresser? Got a green light. Thank you very much, Thank sir. Thank you. The next item, the health care cost, uh, given that uh, I spoke a little heavily on another issue uh, derivative of the public forum, I will pass on that health care cost uh, comment and I will save that for the next one. So you'll have to listen to me then on the health care cost. Consent agenda, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that. Um Items 21.1 through 21.29, that on all those items, any ROs be accepted and placed on file, any RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass the resolutions and general ordinances. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion, Alderman Sushan. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask that we refer 21-5 to public protection and safety. 21-5. Uh, well, just simply ask for it. We, we can refer it. That's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. 
Please note 21-5 will be referred to public protection and safety. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that we pull uh, uh, document 21-4 out and just uh, bring this to the attention of the public. Um, I was there uh, in Alderman Bauman's place. Uh, this was the Board of Parks and Forestry Commission meeting. And uh, we uh, voted on uh, giving the Sheboygan Youth Football League uh, a home. And I'm so excited to, to let them, the public know that Roosevelt Park now will be the place where they will play their games. They had quite a few issues and concerns. They were playing at Kiwanis Park and uh, it was very, getting very difficult for them there. And uh, now that we all came together and agreed that Roosevelt Park would be a perfect place for them, uh, we've really given them a place to, uh, to call their own. A few de uh, details to be worked out with the Department of Public Works as far as lighting and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But uh, that all can be worked out. And uh, as I said, we're very happy that we've given them a home. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you Alderman mm -hmm. Kittleson. You didn't want to pull it out for any other than for just discussion on just your part. Discussion on Anything it. else? Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I just may request from the council and from you is that when we do pull resolutions um, off of the list, if we could just explain to the citizens what that resolution is. Um, I know um, Ald uh, Alderman Kelson just said in a fine manner, but this 21-5 is the RO by the Chief of Police submitting the department's fourth quarter 2005 report. I think people, at least they've come it's come to my attention. They would like to more, know more a little bit of what the consent uh, does. And is, if we could do that as we pull one out, they would be helpful to them. Sure, we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. And again, 21-5, being referred to public protection and safety and RO by the Chief of Police submitting the department's fourth quarter 2005 report. That's what's being referred, referred back to PP. Anything else? Had there being none? We will call a roll. D. Bird. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Bellman. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 21 30, 21 31 to be referred. Report of Officers 2, 2132 uh, by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners recommending repealing and recreating Section 74-2 of the Municipal Code relating to the establishment of parks. That will be referred to Public Works. 2133, I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Alderman Kraft. Your Honor, I make a mo motion that we accept and file the RO. Is there a second? Second, under discussion? Under, under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, this is a, a document that came out of a building use committee. Um, it shows the City of Sheboygan Police Department building a proposed project schedule. Along with that, there's also the City Hall design and, um, and catch up regarding uh, the City Hall remodeling. And I thought we'd bring that to council so that everybody sees the document and, and has it before them. And, can prepare questions or, or whatever may need to be done. Thank you, Alderman Graf. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, do you need a roll call on that? No. All those in favor of the motion to accept and file, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2134 through 2159 to be referred, except please note 2147 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Tom Finnegan complaining about a parking ticket he received on 8th Street on January 11th. That is being referred to Public Protection and Safety and not Transit Commission. Please note. Resolutions introduced three, 2160 by Alderman Susha, Vander Willey, and Meyer Montemayor authorizing the opening of North 21st Street between Calumet Drive and North Avenue to northbound traffic. Alderman Susha, motion to... Thank you, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion to put the resolution upon its passage and a second under discussion, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I would just like to say that um, 
I was in attendance at uh, s several of these public protection and safety meetings where this issue was discussed. And, and I feel uh, strongly that we need to uh, listen to what our, our uh, police officers are saying to us, that um, we need to uh, 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 keep the street closed. Um, it's, uh, it's a real safety issue here, and uh, I think we need to listen to what they're telling us. So I, I think I will have to vote no on this resolution. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Alderman you. Tittleson. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have to go along with Alderman Kellison on this. I lived in that area at one time, so I know what it is all about um, in that little section. I think it's very dangerous, and I think that we should also listen to the people who are the experts in this field. And, and they did all of this work for the past year, and they are saying it's better to keep it closed, so I will also vote to keep it closed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Alderman D. Berg, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I also was at some of those meetings, and the officer that did the study on there did quite a good study, and uh, there were quite a few accidents. And not only would it stop, not stop, but uh, cut down on a lot of the accidents, but the, the price of all the signage that would have to go up there, uh, some of the amounts of money that I heard thrown around some of those nights, there's quite a bit of money involved in making all these signs. And then if they want to do it just for a six-month period, that, that doesn't make sense to waste that money on six months. So I will vote against this document. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to make a motion to open the floor to Officer Williams, who did the study, so he could explain uh, what some of his findings were. There, there's a motion, a second to open the floor. Is there any discussion on opening the floor? Alderman Serda on the opening of the floor. Please do. Can I also add, you said Sergeant Tarshinsky, and then also Officer Williams, too, if we could add that to the motion. Any problem with that? Any problem with the second? We've got uh, opening the floor for three officers. Any further discussion? Excuse me, who are the officers? Just two, Williams and... Okay, thank you. Any further? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will open the floor. To Officer Williams first. Officer Williams, please address the council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council. Uh, I started this project in January of last year. Uh, during that time, I was assigned to uh, the intersection of Calumet and North Avenue as a traffic reduction enforcement. While there, I recognized that there were more accidents happening on North uh, 21st Street at uh, North Avenue as well as Calumet Drive. Um, during my study, um, I found that in a two-year period, there were 26 accidents, and uh, last May, we were able to get that closed off for a six-month period, which has ended up being longer than that time span. And in that uh, eight-month period, as it is now, we've only had one accident in that area. Um, Alderperson uh, Susha, I believe, you, you did this uh, paperwork that I just received today, a bit of a study here. I'd like to commend you. It's a very nice job that you did on there. It uh, indicates all the accidents that took place in this area, including different time frames um, when it happened. You can see the majority of the accidents are occurring up here on 21st Street and North Avenue. 21st Street has five, or I should say North Avenue at 21st Street. North Avenue has five lanes of traffic, 85 feet of roadway for individuals to try and cross to use that shortcut to access Calumet Drive. The same way if they're using that as a shortcut to get to North 21st Street to continue on to businesses or to a Pigeon River School. Uh, if you look at the bottom intersection here, North 21st Street, that includes Main Avenue and Calumet Drive, you have different um, approaches. In other words, the drivers have to look in different directions, not just two directions, in order to view the traffic when they're trying to make this uh, crossing. During this time, what happens, if you would look on the uh, first page here, or, uh, pardon me, I believe it would be the third page, Alderman Susha put down all the different times of the day when these accidents occur. The majority of these accidents are all occurring during school hours and during uh, business hours. Of these 26 accidents, only two of them occurred later than uh, 6.30 p.m. One was at 9.34 p.m., the other one at 12.13 a.m. The majority of these accidents are, are occurring during business hours, during school hours, because people are being rushed and are trying to get across the street 
of all these of all this uh, lanes of traffic, making it very dangerous. Um, again, closing this off, we reduced this down to just one accident in an eight month period. I did look at different ways of trying to approach this project. I looked at making this a one way traffic lane going northbound. Also looking at making it a one way going northbound and turning left onto uh, or turning right onto Calumet or North Avenue only. Uh, the problem with those was there are still uh, problems with people trying to cross this lane of traffic, trying to cross North Avenue, as well as the trucks pulling into Muth Avenue or Muth uh, Business there. Uh, by closing this off, we felt that this was the safest and easiest way to prevent these accidents from happening. I think in the past eight months we've shown that uh, to be the case. By opening this up to one-way traffic, trucks would have to come down Calumet Drive and then turn in to get, to get into Muth uh, parking lot there. In doing so, they're going to create some uh, problems on Calumet Drive, slowing traffic up that would be going both southbound and northbound. Um, when they're going oh, southbound... So, excuse me, I need to ask, Chief, could you ask these two gentlemen to stop talking to councils? It's in session, and we have... Alan Segali. I thank you very much for that, Mr. Weir, because they've been talking through this whole session. Okay, Chief. We'll thank you. Th thank you. Pardon my interruption. No, sir. Chief, please continue. Okay, uh, if we open this up to uh, one-way traffic going uh, northbound, uh, it's going to still create problems with uh, traffic flow on Calumet Drive when trucks are attempting to get into Muth parking lot. In addition, when they're leaving Muth parking lot, they have to be concerned about uh, vehicles that are approaching northbound and making a, a right-hand turn on the 21st Street. Uh, the fencing area in there is, uh, has that security fencing, which makes it difficult for them to see vehicles coming from that direction. Um, again, after looking at different ways to approach this problem, we found that uh, closing off uh, 21st Street at Calumet Drive was the safest thing to do. And again, uh, if you look at the number of accidents that occurred at both of these intersections, in the time that this has been closed, there's only been one accident which occurred at North Avenue and 21st Street for vehicles that were uh, both proceeding east and west on North Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please hold on. Any. Are there any questions for Officer Williams? Uh, Alderman Manny. Just one. Thank you, Your Honor. And just very quickly, were these accidents caused by cars going northbound across North Avenue or southbound turning on the 21st, or both? Both. Both. They were, they were caused by both. There were also vehicles making turns off of North Avenue. There were traffic accidents that were occurring at Calumet and 21st Street. Um, so there was a majority of them, but if you look, there's quite a few of them. Um, as Alderman Schuster pointed out here, quite a few of them are from crossing the, the roadways attempting to get across there. And I don't know if any of you have been up at that intersection when school is being let out or uh, when uh, the businesses are being let out. Traffic tends to back up. People are getting frustrated, and that's when the accidents are occurring because they're trying to hurry across that intersection. Um, when the highway was designed on Calumet Drive, the traffic signals at North and Calumet Drive were designed to handle uh, the amount of traffic that they have there. And uh, in order for them to just turn and go to Calumet and North Avenue, uh, it might be a slight delay, but it is much safer. And I think most people find that the delay really isn't there because the traffic's not backed up as much as it was before. Uh, I think uh, opening this roadway um, to a northbound traffic is not keeping the, uh, the safety of the citizens of Sheboygan in mind. I think you need to keep this roadway closed, and I believe that it could potentially open up a liability for the city if we do not keep this roadway closed. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Officer thank Williams. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Officer Tinsky, Chief would like to address the council first, sir, if you don't mind. Thank you. Mr. Mayor and uh, Common Council, I, I thank you once again. Uh, this is just a, a prime example of what I've asked my officers to do, to problem solve, to see issues that arise in the city. Officer William needs to be commended for the effort that he put into this. I've made that clear at the committee, and, and I thank uh, the committee for uh, bringing it up today. I thank you for the work that you put into this. Uh, but I, we look at public safety, and we do believe that this is the best course is to keep that road closed at this time. We also closed off, at least to, to a portion, 25th Street at uh, Calumet Drive a number of years ago. 
Uh, there were some concerns at that time, but I think it worked out beautiful. It uh, reduced the number of accidents, and once again, I think this is uh, a solution we came up with. The committee uh, listened to that solution. They may not have uh, agreed with it, but at least we discussed it. We threw it on uh, their, their lap to make a decision. It's here tonight. And we come with one last opportunity to sit down and say, listen, as far as a public <coughs> safety concern, we still believe it should be kept closed. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Officer Tosinski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry, Sergeant Tosinski. Uh, Please forgive me. Yeah, a short time. This actually, uh, this actually started as a project uh, with Mike Williams and former Sergeant Tarkowski came to the committee to ask to close this road as a temporary test uh, basis back in May 13th. Um, I think it proved the point that we did uh, reduce accidents and uh, this is a great street analysis that Alderman Susha put together and uh, she pointed out and, uh, that some of these accidents uh, were not caused by the cross traffic but all of these accidents were reduced to one at 25th and North by closing the street, whether they were related to crossing or not. Uh, so I think we've proved our point. When we came back to committee, we asked to make the closing permanent because we could only do it on a temporary basis under police powers. Um, and our only intent was to, to make it permanent and, and to have the committee forward to council to try and make this a permanent closure. We did not offer a solution to make it open one way northbound. We don't agree with that. We don't think it's safe. Uh, the city engineer didn't think it was safe. Uh, back in 2000 when the roadway was reconstructed north on Calumet Drive, the state uh, suggested and uh, kind of pushed to close, close that whole block off 21st Street, uh, but it wasn't done at that time. We think we've made our case and we asked the council to permanently close uh, 21st Street at Calumet Drive. Okay. Thank you. Alderman uh, Ratke is first. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to ask that Mr. Holton address us on his views with this intersection as well. Okay. Mr. Holton is a department head. No need to open the floor. Mr. Holton, please address the council. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I looked at the information that was supplied and I uh, haven't changed my view. I think it should be closed and remain closed. Uh, we talked about it in 98. Uh, during the reconstruction of the intersection and it was, there was opposition at that time to close it. And uh, if someone wants to try uh, making it one way we can do that, but there's probably a cost a couple thousand dollars for signage uh, and for labor to do that. But uh, in my experience, it's still best to have it closed. Anytime you take a leg out of a uh, intersection, reducing conflicts, which is going to reduce the accidents. Okay. Just hang in there because I think, uh, Alderman Susha, a question for whom? No, I was going to make a statement. Make a statement. Are we done with uh, Mr. Holton? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holton. Okay, we're down to the alderman here. Alderman Susha, you're next in the line. Thank uh, you, Your Excuse Honor. me, Alderman Sarda, I, I, will, I will ask him to come back when you're ready. I'm just trying to take the alderman as they come up. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I did hand out to all the aldermen um, an analysis of these accidents. And what I'd like to do is first apologize to the public for me not taking the time um, when I was first approached back in May by the police um, in regards to closing this because I think that an apology is owed because I don't believe it should have been closed in the first place. When you look at the 26 accidents, you're looking at a combined accident total of two different intersections over a two and a half year period. What that comes down to is an average of five accidents per intersection per year roughly. Now what we keep com looking at is they keep comparing it to one accident that happened between May and December in an eight month period of time. And that's not a fair comparison to look at a two and a half year segment and compare it to eight months. And if you look at the third page of the comparison that I gave you, at the bottom of the third page, the very last item listed there, it shows the month of the year that these accidents have occurred. You find that 13 Half of the accidents of the 26 that they're talking about occurred in the months of January, February, March, and April. These four months we have not even studied, but yet that is when half of these accidents happened in the two and a half year study period. When you look closer at each individual accident, you can break them into three categories. And on the first page, accidents number one through six, they reflect the southbound traffic on North 21st Street. 
Accidents 7 through 12 reflect the northbound accidents. And the remaining 14 accidents have nothing to do with anybody trying to travel on that section of 21st Street. What you'll find when you review these reports is that if you have two cars heading east, going towards the lake on North Avenue, and one car swerves into the other car, they counted that as an accident and blamed it on North 21st Street. The two cars are heading east, going the same direction. Nobody was turning. And you find also, when you go through here, there are several of them that cross the yellow line on Calumet Drive. Um, one will cross the center line, hit oncoming traffic, and that has nothing to do with 21st Street. Nobody was trying to turn or anything. So when you break it down, you'll find that you have six accidents caused from southbound traffic on 21st and six accidents caused by northbound traffic on 21st Street. By making it a one-way, we are going to eliminate half the accidents. What that breaks it down to then is in the two and a half year analysis, you're talking about, about one accident per intersection per year. And that coincides basically with what he is saying. In the time that the road was closed, we had one accident. This, what we're requesting from the council tonight, is a six-month trial to go one way going north. And this suggestion came from the citizens that live in that area. The problem that they're having is that there is a backup right now of trucks. When they are on North Avenue, and it might help if you look at the map, maybe you can visualize it better, we have the intersection at Calumet and North. And if, some, if you have two trucks that are on North Avenue heading east, and they want to turn left as if they're going to the Lear Company, and they want to turn left by Kentucky Fried Chicken, they have to stop there and wait for the oncoming traffic. Now the people that live over behind Kentucky Fried Chicken and over by Lear, what's happening is now they're forced to go to the intersection at Calumet North. And whichever direction they're coming from, oftentimes they are stopped at green lights because they can't get onto North Avenue because you have two trucks that are blocking their way. Whereas if they were able to continue and use the shortcut on North 21st Street, then they won't be stopped at green lights. And I can imagine that would be pretty scary if I had to stop with my children in the car at a green light because I couldn't go where my, to get home the direction I needed to go. I'd be very concerned about that as well. So this has to do with um, the suggestion of going one way north. We're able to cut the accidents in half. This is a six-month trial. We gave them the six-month trial to close the road. Now we're proposing another suggestion here, and then we'll bring it back in six months and look at it. Um, a couple of other points that I wanted to uh, make. Uh, actually, I think I touched on the things that he had mentioned. Um, again, I'll just reiterate that what this analysis is doing, it looks like there would be only one accident per year if we went down to going north. And I would ask that you support this for six months. And then at that time, if you choose to shut it down, that would be your decision. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Van Der Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the committee has investigated this a lot. We've been dealing with this, and I've been on both sides. Leave it open, leave it closed go with the compromise with the one way. But recently what changed my mind was talking to people who use that road every day, to people who live in that area, and they said, bottom line is the way it was, it was dangerous. And now the way it is now, it's not. And they felt that it wasn't a compromise by making it a one way. So because of those conversations I had, I'm gonna vote against this. Thank you, Alderman Lennerwheel. Alderman Serta. Did you need to have Mr. Holton come up? Mr. Holton, would you please address the council, sir? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to just reiterate what Alderman um, Vander Willey had said, said, that what it really boils down to is safety. Um, as far as the six months trials go, it's my understanding that we were gonna pay $2,400 to make some temporary changes that might work. Um, and what I need, um, Mr. Holton, if he could just expound on, the concerns from those citizens that did come to speak at public protection and safety did not fall on deaf ears. Um, there was some alternatives and suggestions that Ryan Sazma gave, um, very simple as tweaking the lights, the timing of the lights during those um, busy times. And if, Tom, if you could just expound on those alternatives. Well, I, the pattern's been established now, but the, there's some uh, uh, backlogs of traffic. I believe that there's an, a left turn arrow for southbound Calumet can be added 
Uh, I believe it's probably $500 to add a left turn arrow for designated left turns. Uh, I think that would probably be the only major issue out there. Okay. Thank you. That's sufficient, Alderman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holton. Okay. Who's blinking next? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Eric. Um, your comment uh, was going the direction I wanted to ask you about. That was the timing question. I just want to see if my perception is accurate. If we increase the length of the green light for east-west on North Avenue, that frees the left turn traffic heading north on 25th. Is that correct? Because you don't have the backup from the light? I'm not quite following your question. You're, you're, you're heading you're east west on North west, Avenue. You're heading east on North Avenue. If you, if you have the intersection at Calumet and North, yep. green longer for east and west. Right. That frees your backup from traffic heading west blog going back to 25th Street by Kentucky yes. Fried Chicken. But there, that freeing it up, then it eases the left turn, but folks. There is a left turn arrow, though, for... No, I mean the left turn at 25th. That's part of the problem, is my understanding. At 21st? I mean 21st, oh, okay. okay. So your green light longer east-west so, frees oh, up your turns on the 21st yes. as well, doesn't it? Yes, okay. when the backup would move And how much quicker. has that been extended, that green light, so far? I couldn't tell you that. So that's a good way to tweak it further. I, the other, other question I have is probably for one of the officers, and that is what is the average number of accidents at a major or comparable intersection for you? Alderman Manny, which officer would you like to answer that? Whichever knows. Mr. <laughs> Sergeant Tosinski? Uh, depends on the intersection. Uh, we don't have a program to plug that information. I, I would say an intersection that has a lot of accidents would be anywhere from 8 up. Naturally, 14th and Erie is our majority is by far the worst intersection for accidents. Then you go up to business, uh, excuse me, Taylor in Washington will be the next one. Um, eight accidents in a year is, is a lot. And even with those, all those accidents she points out that weren't related to crossing the 21st and Calumet in the six month period that's been closed, actually the, per the period that it's still closed, we've had that one accident. And I haven't seen an increase in accidents at Calumet North. So, Indirectly, it may have affected those other accidents as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Um, Alderman Myers next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to question, I don't know, I guess uh, Mr. Holton might know this answer. Um, when you say closing the road, um, are you referring to just closing the one side of it the way it is now, and it will be open to the Muth Company? Or are we talking I, about closing the road completely? I would suggest closing it completely, put curb and gutter and sidewalk through on Calumet Drive and on North Avenue. And on North Avenue, yes. because that was my concern. Because yes. if the road was not going to be open to the taxpayers, then I don't feel that you know there should be a road there at all then. Right. OK, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Alan Meyer. Next, we have Alderman Susha, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. The last thing I want to see happen is that road closed um, in this fashion. If any individual in the city wants that road closed, they can do it above the table and they can ask for it. There are three coincidences that make me feel very uncomfortable. You know, aside from being misled with the big number of 26 accidents, when you break it down, you find there are only 12 accidents that are related to this road over a two and a half year time frame. The first uncomfortable coincidence was that this road closing was slipped onto my agenda in public protection and safety last May without my permission. I was new, I didn't know that was unusual, now everybody knows they have to go through me if they want something on the agenda. Back in, I believe it was November, once again, I was quite surprised when I printed my agenda off and saw that the opening or the permanent closure was slipped onto my agenda without my knowledge. We held that document um, because I was not happy that things were being slid onto the agenda without my approval. Secondly, the second coincidence that makes me feel uncomfortable is that this road is adjacent to the Muth building. Mr. Muth made a donation after this road was closed in the amount of $5,000 to buy taser guns. I am not comfortable with that strange coincidence. The third strange coincidence is that the planning department has received two inquiries from developers during the last year wanting to know what the master plan is for that intersection. Now, if somebody wants to develop that land, they can petition to have that road closed. The land gets divided between the two property owners, and then if anyone chooses to sell it, they can. 
but I do not want to be misled into believing that we're doing this because of 26 accidents. We are asking for a six month trial period to make it a one way. This is no different than what they were asking to close it for a six month trial period. So I would ask that you support the six month trial period. Um, there's too many uncomfortable coincidences that I would ever back closing the street unless it's done legitimately. Thank you, Alma Susha. Chief Kirk, would you like to make a comment, sir? First off, my secretary takes care of the agenda. When my secretary gets information from people who want items placed on the agenda, that is what used to take place. When you took over this, this committee, uh, you need to make your, your orders known so you know how to proceed. Second, I'm, I'm offended. I've been offended in the past. She has made these allegations about some connection between Mr. Muth, my department, me, or my officers. I've had enough. I'm tired about it. Mayor, I've talked to you about it. Something needs to be done on this. I've asked you about this. If there's allegations here, I would love to have the State Department of Criminal Investigation come into this city to investigate me and my department. I've held off on that request, but now it's brought up again. I'm tired of these allegations. If she says that there is something here that I'm doing something unethical, illegal, I want it investigated and put to bed. My reputation is at risk here, and you are attacking me and my department. My department is based on problem solving and community policing. When we see a problem, when my officers address that problem, they come to this committee to address what they see as one possible resolution. Whether you buy into that resolution or not, that is that committee's obligation to look into it and make your own decision. But do not attack me. Do not attack my department. And if you wish, please, Mr. Mayor, tomorrow we can make a phone call to the State Department of Criminal Investigation to have someone come in here and to look into this matter. We will talk about it tomorrow, Chief. Next, we have Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was going to speak about something else. I was going to ask the gentleman how much time they put into this and how much work, you know, you know, what it took them to develop all of this, to close this. but. I guess I'm beyond words as to what was just done to our chief of police and to our men in blue. I, I, I'm dumbfounded that something like this could have happened here on the council floor, Mr. Mayor. This isn't part of a council. We wonder why things aren't going right on this council, why things aren't going right in this city. Well, it's because people are being accused of things that aren't taking place. And no older person has the right, at least as far as I'm concerned, on any committee, being head of any committee or being on this council floor, to accuse any department head, you, any one of us, of taking bribes or anything else. This is wrong. This is wrong for this to have taken place tonight. I'm sorry. I. This is just wrong. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. i just like to make a comment. We do have to bridle our speech, uh, carefully choose our words. Uh, accusations, people have been accused on all sides. Don't forget, I was accused and I was investigated. We don't need to continue to do that. Our job is very serious. We have a lot of work to do. Let's stick with the issues. Uh, in defense of Alderman Susha, she did say coincidence, borderline, still a coincidence. Uh, but I can see where Chief Kirk is concerned. The Chief and I have discussed this before uh, on more than one occasion, on more than one individual making a comment. Uh, if there's any more concern about that, I'd ask that uh, we let that issue lie for now so that I can meet with Chief Kirk in the morning. And then we will see where we want to go with that. Is that okay with everyone? Mr. Holton, same issue, sir? Or? Subject, yes. 
Pardon me? For the 21st year, yes. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to expand on all person Meyer's question, when I say run curb and gutter through there, we still have to maintain access to both those businesses. So it'd be a driveway cut with an approach uh, with the sidewalk going through, so there would be cost to do that. Uh, I would guess that you're probably looking at four or $5,000 in time to do that. And if that street is vacated, half goes to adjoining property on the west and half goes to adjoining property on the east, so everyone's aware of that too. So. Thank you. Okay, next we have Alderman Van Wheel. I believe second time, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we never discussed with the curb and gutter and pole protection and safety, and I have concerns over that, so I guess I would ask if Mr. Holton would, if we would look at that, that would, that would be brought forth in committee, because I, I, I feel it's not a good idea at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderbilt. Alderman Deberg. I'll skip this round. Thank, Thank you, you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, for Mr. Holton, please. Um, when he's talking about putting curb and gutter in or a driveway or a cut like that, is that assessed to the property owners or is that um, this something that the city? It w I guess it could be assessed if the street's vacated first, they own the property, then we come in and do it. It certainly could be assessed at that point. That'd be a yes if, if, it was if the street was vacated first. Thank um, City Attorney, would you like to speak, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Thank Mr. you. Mr. City Attorney. Uh, just to comment, I th think the issue is the resolution before us. As far as other solutions, I think that should be addressed in committee. I don't think that should be done on the council floor with kind of a, you know, back of a napkin sort of uh, uh, approach. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I think whatever you do, if you're going to do it, it, it be discussed in committee and uh, get some buy-in by the council on that. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Please stay there. Uh, Alderman Reckie, no? Okay. Alderman Gruff, you're done, sir. Mr. Holton, you're done, sir. Okay. Read the motion, please. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The motion is to pass the resolution. And be mindful, 2160 by Alderman Susha, Vander Wheeling, Meyer, and Montemayor authorizing the opening of North 21st Street between Calumet Drive and North Avenue to northbound traffic. There's been a motion to pass the put the resolution upon its passage. Second, it's been thoroughly discussed. Please call the roll. I'm sorry. A yes vote. Keep it open. No. Excuse me, Alderman oh, McGraw. I'm Berg. Please rise here and speak if I can get you in the Thank mic. Thank you, Mayor. A yes vote uh, keeps it open. A no vote shuts her down. A, a yes vote authorizes the opening of. A no vote is to not open. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Everybody got that clear? We will call the roll. Serta. No. Davis. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Graf. No. Kittleson. No. Manny. No. Meyer. Yes. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. No. Sagali. No. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. No. Bauman. No. And Deberg. No. Um, three eyes, 11 noes. Motion fails. 2161, 2162 lies over to be referred. 2163 through 2171. Report of committee six, 2172 by law and licensing, recommending granting a temporary class B license to the Safe Harbor fundraiser. Uh, Alderman Manny, motion to accept and adopt. Thank you, Honor. On behalf of the committee, I move that we accept and adopt the recommendation. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion? Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when it was at law and licensing, um, I voted no on this issue, and I'll be voting again on it also. I, I have very strong feelings about Safe Harbor and a fundraiser that is going to be done with um, a wine tasting. I am a strong believer that I always feel that when it comes to domestic violence or domestic abuse, whether it be a man or woman, that alcohol is is usually, if not, the reason for this. Um, being at one time, 37 years ago, being a victim, 
of it, I understand thoroughly what it goes, what people go through. Um, we never had safe harbor years and years ago. You just did what you needed to do. Um, I donate to this organization when I have my grandchildren things and all that. I just, I feel there's got to be a better way for them to have a fundraiser that does not involve alcohol. So I still would be voting no on this. So I thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sugali. Any other? There being none, we'll call the roll. Davis? Aye. Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? No. And Serta? No. 11 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 2173 by Public Works making no recommendation regarding the communication from Jeff Shuko regarding goals congregating on the riverfront, boardwalk, railings, and his solution to the problem. We'll take Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. As stated, it was a tie vote and basically no recommendation. I did move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and filed. Second. Motion is second to file. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2174 to be referred. Report of committees eight. 2175 by finance recommended executing the amended development agreement for Morningstar condominium project will be referred back to finance. There is an additional stipulation in the contract that needs to be reviewed by finance committee. When they do and have that opportunity to review, they will forward it back to the council. 2176, by special commission on risk management recommending retaining outside council to represent the city in the matter of Luna Construction Company versus Michaels Corporation et al. authorizing payment for said services and passing the substitute resolution. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second? A second? Under discussion. There being on, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 2177 by Alderman Berg, Roth, Serta, Berg, and Van Akron, amending the municipal code so as to delete and add various positions from the fire department's table of organization. That is being referred to public protection and safety. Please make notation. 2178 through 2181 lies over. 2182, 2183 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2084, RO number 4980506 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Tr Carter Paulus regarding issues with accountability and fiscal responsibility of the Libor Library Board of Trustees. Alderman Groff, motion to accept and file. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2085, RO number 4990506 by the city clerk submitting a communication from all the, all the persons Serta regarding the reopening of North 21st Street. Motion to accept and file. All the Serta, try this one. <laughs> I move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. Thank you, Alderman. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2048, resolution number 2360506 by all the persons Susha, allowing speakers at the public forum upon request a maximum of one minute extension to allow the speaker to summarize their, meaning, their remaining comments. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file. You want to file that? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I wrote the wrong thing put the resolution upon its passage. I'm sorry, I meant to say put resolution upon its passage. Thank There's you. a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Is there a second? There's a second. 
under discussion. I think this will help work the, the process in a fair way. Some people get three minutes, some people get five. Keep it consistent, keep it fair. Uh, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? No. And Graf? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries 2049, resolution number 2370506 by all the person Susha calling for an advisory referendum on casino <coughs> and or riverboat gambling in the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Susha. Move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Sagali, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2050, resolution number 2380506 by Alderman Graf, Stefan, Montemayor, Susha to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 206 budget. Would you like to take the next three, Alderman Graf? Yes, please, Your Honor. Uh, on that matter, I would. Make a motion that uh, resolution number 2050 be, um, be put upon its passage, and then 2052, which is a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2005 budget, that that would also be put upon its passage, and 2075, which is a resolution to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget, that that um, resolution would also be put upon its passage. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second, under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. D. Berg. Serta. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Manny. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2066, General Ordinance Number 740506, by amending General Ordinance Number 550506, adopted December 19, 2005, so as to correct an error in the legal description for the vacation of the unpaved east-west alley adjacent to the south line of Lots 3 and 4, Auden and Samen's addition, and adjacent to the north line of Lot 4, Swift's addition between High Avenue and Swift Avenue. Alderman. Thank you. I, I would move that uh, the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? And Meyer, 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2067, General Ordinance Number 750506, by all the persons Berg, Van Akron, Berg, Serta, and Graf, reestablishing the salary schedule for the certain designated elected officials. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion to second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, uh, the committee discussed this at length, and um, they took into consideration a lot of data that was provided to them through the HR department. Uh, for instance, looking at the clerk, in 2005, Sheboygan's clerk made $57,474. Excuse me, $57,474. Um, the average salary of the 13 clerks in a comparison data set was $65,764 for the same position. Um, if you look at uh, the combined position example, having a, um, a, clerk tre a treasurer clerk, those were not used in our sample. So it was just strictly clerks that were used in the, in the example. Uh, there were no uh, data used for 2006 because it, 
at the time we requested this information, uh, budgets were still being prepared, so uh, no one had any idea what was going to happen in 2006. Of the 13 clerk positions, <coughs> 10 were appointed and 3 were elected. Sheboygan, Appleton, La Crosse, um, the average of those three salaries, uh, if you want to take the appointed positions or the elected positions as we have, uh, comes to an average of $63,329. Uh, in 2006, the committee uh, unanimously, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, proposed a 3% bump for the city clerk, uh, moving her to $59,198. Um, the 2007 uh, equalizer would be $4,000. The 2007 salary would then be $63,198, uh, which puts this position at a par with all the other elected officials that were making that same amount in 2005. Um, and still $2,566 below what the data set of the 13 clerks that we examined. So um, with that, we, we authorized the increase on, on the attached seat, sheet. Uh, looking at the city attorney, uh, his salary for 2005 was 89610 The average salary of 15 city attorneys in our data set were, uh, for 2005 was $93,033, a difference of $3,423. In 2006, um, the increase that he got was 3% uh, for a total of 92218 In 2007, for him, we proposed a a bump of $2,000, bringing him up to $94,218, which um, was, um, if you look at the uh, 15 um, attorneys, their average salary for 2005 was $93,342. So um, that would bring him very close to that. Uh, the 2005 average salary with life, like staff of three was $93,653. By population, Eau Claire, Janesville, Wauwatosa, and La Crosse, their average um, salary is $95.92. So uh, presently, <coughs> our city attorney is paid below what they are. Comparison with the private sector to, is difficult to find out. However, UW Law School websites notes that the majority of 2003 graduates that are employed in the private sector, uh, which is about 65% of the graduates, um, report earnings of about $105,000 or more, and the median income of about 50% is reported at about $90,000. With that information um, that was supplied to me by um, Alderman uh, Eberg, um, I would support uh, and would ask the council to support the, the raises that we have outlined in the general ordinance. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. And I'm sure Attorney McLean and Madam Clerk Richards deserve this money. However, this is more than the 1.5% increase that, our, we're running, that we're using for our budget information now, right? It is more than 1.5% increase? It is, if I may explain, but... Excuse me, Alderman Ald Graff. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, but this was set back in in 2002, I believe, when all these rates were set. So that's why the 3% was set at that time. That would, okay, that would bring us up to 20, 2007. But from 2007 to, to 08, 09, 010, it's still more than 1.5% increase, isn't it? Yes. As much as I would want them to have that money, and they certainly deserve it, and they certainly earn it. If it's more than one and a half percent, I can't support it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Meyer, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it's, it's definitely um, proven that our elected officials are underpaid in this city, and um, Madam Clerk definitely deserves a raise for all the work that she puts in. But at this point in time, I just don't see where we're going to get this money. I mean, we're going to be talking about borrowing money for a police station in 07. Our taxes are going to go up. I just cannot support any increases in pay at this time. And they are well deserved. They, they should have it. But we just do not have it in our budget right now. 
and I cannot support it. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I, too, I, I can't see a raise of that magnitude, although the positions are very important to the city. Neither one of these two, we got to make the point here, are guaranteed this because they have to be reelected before they could get this, and I'm sure they would be. But unfortunately, we just don't have the money at this time. But I just want to make a point that re-election has to take place before either one of these two get that money. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Retke. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I have to agree with everything that's been said. I think that Madam Clerk and our city attorney are doing a wonderful job, and I want to thank them for everything that they have done. Um, but I, I, I look at the, sometimes the way the city is run to a certain extent, similar to a company. And I can't think of one company where the CEO makes less than the people that work for them. And I think that by moving up the Madam Clerk, um, what we're doing is we're actually going to have her salary surpass the mayor. And that just doesn't seem quite right with me. Um, I think something that we should consider doing that might be just as valuable to Madam Clerk is um, making it an appointed position rather than an elected position, being as that sounds like that's what the majority of the cities do. Um, also, as far as the bumps, you know, a $4,000 bump uh, to bring her up to almost uh, the, the midpoint of all the clerks that we looked at, um, there's nobody I know that's two years on the job and automatically goes up to the midpoint of a salary range. So it, it would take a couple years to work your way to the mid and up to the top point. So, so I guess um, what I'd like to do is, is make a motion to amend this, if I am allowed to amend this type you of document. make a motion to amend, yes. I'll make a motion to amend it to reflect um, a 1.5% increase each year, the exact same that we're giving to uh, the unions. Is, there's a motion and a second to amend resolution 2067 to reflect one and a half percent increase. And there's a second under discussion on the amendment. There being yes. Alderman Graff on the amendment, sir. On the amendment. Um, that's one and a half percent for each of the years 2007, 8, 9, 10. And does that eliminate the bump or does because you didn't make that as part of your motion, so. Yes, all in solution. Oh. Thank you for correcting me. I would eliminate the bump in pay and just make it a 1.5% increase uh, for each of the years that are listed on the document. Thank you. Second cover that. Yes. Second cover that. On the amendment, Alderman Settler. Thank you, Your Honor. Just for clarification, um, we keep using this 1.5%, and I just need to point out to the public and to the elder person that we are going through arbitration, and that reward might not be given, and actually it might be exceeded um, if we actually lose. So, and in that, in, in that case, does that mean we come back and amend um, these positions to bump them up to the award that we give the other unions? I don't think we should be setting them be behind. Thank you, Alderman Sadler. Alderman Grouse, second time on the amendment? Yes, um, second time. I, I can't support the, the motion. And, you know, you look at these, these raises. This is for 2007, 8, 9, and 10. Now, the 1.5% that we're, we're giving to all other employees is for 2005 and 2006. It has nothing to do with 2007. And at this point in time, we have not looked and determined what we're going to give out as far as increases for 2007. That's why I don't believe we should support this. <coughs> The committee looked at this, and in 2007, 8, 9, and 10, we used 2%, which we thought was fair and equitable and was something that probably could be done in 2007. Uh, that's, that's kind of what we determined and, and thought would be um, something that would be livable with all. And therefore, I'd, so, um, I'd ask the council to um, not support the amendment and then to in turn support the document. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Alderman Ratke on the amendment, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't support the amendment, and uh, the reasoning being I don't support the first one either, but this very council, not, what, just a few weeks ago, turned down a raise for themselves starting in 2007 for whoever sits in these seats starting then. We're here for public service. That's what we're here for. That's the name of this, the, our jobs here. Each and every one of us sitting here this evening has been elected to do a job for our community. That's what we're here to discuss, not to be giving raises to elected officials. We can't afford it, simple as that. And a 1.5% increase or any increase is just too much at this point in time, especially since we've already turned down a raise for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. 
Alderman Manny. Thank you, Honor. A uh, simple question. I believe legally we do need to set the schedule for four years at this point. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Manny will on the amendment. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to say that I agree with Alderman Racky. That doesn't happen a whole lot. And, uh, <laughs> and that um, I believe that it should be set at 0% increase the next four years. So, thank you. Alderman Vanderhoe, thank you for your comments and thank you for the little joke of humor. We needed it. Okay, on the amendment, please call the roll. T let, uh, repeat the uh, amendment, please. The amendment is to reflect a 1.5% increase and eliminate any bumps. Thank you, uh, Madam City Clerk. Radke? No. Sigali? I'm, I'm sorry. The amendment is to reflect only a 1.5% increase and eliminate any bumps. No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Kittleson? Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Um, five ayes, nine noes. Amendment fails. Going back to the general ordinance that's been put upon its passage. Anybody need any further clarification? If not, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Sigali. Excuse me. I'm sorry, this would be to pass the ordinance as, as written. That's the motion that Alderman, we're voting on. Alderman Sigali, do you need clarification? Yes, please. We are, the, there was a motion put to put the resolution upon its passage as it is to, to grant the increases. There was an amendment made. The amendment was defeated. We're back to putting the resolution upon its passage as originally stated. Excuse me, Madam City Clerk. Alderman Susha, do you have a comment? Yes, I'm a little confused. Thank you. Um, Alderman Groff just said that, that this document reflects a 2% pay increase, and I've just done the math and it reflects a 2.5% pay increase, so I'm wondering if there was an error in drafting this, or was it only supposed to be 2%? Because then we should probably adjust the document. We, we have, I have, to, I have to be very firm with this. We were done discussing, discussion was over, we're calling the roll. I thought the issue was to clarify. We need to call the roll. Please call the roll, Madam City Clerk. Sigali. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Groff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. No. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. And Radke. Six, eight to six. Pardon me? Eight ayes, six noes. Eight ayes, six no. Motion carries. 2073, General Ordinance Number 760506, by all the persons Susha, Vanderwilly, Radke, Meyer, and Montemayor, relating to the no parking, standing, stopping zone, school days only, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the north side of Cooper Avenue, west of North 20th Street. All the person Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion a second to put general ordinance upon its passage. Any discussion? Excuse Alderman me. Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, th there's a few more um, ordinances that, were, that are coming up. In fact, I think it's, there's 10 of them having to do with new signage and new rules about streets and uh, schools. I simply wanted to thank Sergeant Tosinski for all of the work for making this clear and going through this what it looked like to me, a lot, lot, lots of problems and lots of diagrams, and he did it all very well. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Any further discussion on general ordinance number 2073? There be a non. Adam City Clerk, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 2076, General Ordinance Number 770506, by all the persons Susha, Vanderwill, Radke, Meyer, and Montemayor, relating to the add-in various no parking between driveway signs along the south side of Washington Avenue, west, of, west from the west curb line of South 12th Street. 
Alderman Susha. Thank you. Um, I would like to take uh, the ordinances from 2076 through 2083, 2083, and I move that all of these ordinances be placed upon passage. There's a motion to put upon their passage 2076 to 2083 as they deal with the same various issues. And there's a second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. What these deal with are the, re the renovations at North and South High School, and um, we saw some wonderful drawings, um, and I want to thank Sergeant Chizinski as well for the time and effort put into this, um, but we need to uh, change some of the parking rules around the high schools, and that's what all of these documents relate to. Thank you, Alma Susha, for clarifying that. Any other comments? There being none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Radke, Sagali, and Susha. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized, authorized by law, 2184. A communication by Alderman Vanderwill from Joe Ann Wright requesting another North Park and sign on a pole in the alley near her home as she and her family are struggling to get their cars in and out of the alley as people are ignoring the existing sign. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 2185. An RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Blue Line Sheboygan requesting permission to close various streets during the ice bowling event to be held March 17th and 18th. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 2186, an RO by the city clerk submitting the older person's Manny statement at the library board meeting on January 31st, 2006 in support of the motion to delete clause 13 from the employment contract amendment with the library director Sharon Winkle. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Alderman Manny. Your Honor, uh, thank you, and I move to accept and file the document. There's a motion to accept and file, and a second. Any discussion? Your Honor. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, regarding this, uh, I received a call regarding um, this particular document, so I sent an email over to um, Alderman Manning and asked him uh, to make sure that he please submitted it to council so that I could read it because I was unable to attend the, um, the library um, board meeting. And after reviewing this, um, this I think allows me to, um, to put this matter to rest. And based on what you had said earlier, I think it's time the, um, the entire body up here does that. And um, we need to move on. We have more important things to do. And I think if every alderman takes the opportunity to read this and look at it and then possibly even ask um, Alderman Manning questions about what did or did not happen, I think um, they will find that they should be able to put this to rest too. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I wanted to <clears throat> take this time to uh, thank Alderman Manning for his words at that meeting. Um, Last week, they were very reassuring words and very um, words that really set the tone for everything. And the big message I got out of this is we need to work as a council, as a city, as a community to make sure the institution of the Mead Public Library does not get further damage from anything. We need to work with ourselves here and work with the library board and make sure that we continue to move forward and not tear everything down and go backward. And his words there were so reassuring you, know, I came out of there feeling very good about what I heard in that. And I want to thank Alderman Manny for taking the time to address the library board and the people in attendance last week because he, he really struck, struck a nail um, that I needed to hear. And uh, for those that may be interested in the public, this, I believe, is available on the library's website. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess we're not answering the proper question. It's not if we are satisfied here. Is the taxpayer satisfied? They're the ones that are asking the question. They're the ones that want to know. They're the ones that want to come to committee of the whole meeting to discuss this issue and express their concerns. When I called for a committee of the whole meeting, Marilyn Montemayor said no. I know there's seven of us that have asked for a general meeting. Let the people hear what's, what are we so afraid of not letting them hear about? They have the right to know. That's what their calls are about. 
They want to ask questions. They have the right to ask questions, Mr. Mayor. We don't have the right not to give them those answers. And that's why I'm still calling for a committee of the whole over a special meeting. I don't think anything can be solved until we let the people hear. Thank you. Okay. Excuse me, Diane, do you want to make a statement? No? Okay. I, um, Alderman Montemayor is within her right. The Committee of the Whole is not the proper forum to discuss this. If a special meeting would be more appropriate, I feel, as Alderman Groff does, as Alderman Manny, and a lot of people in this community, that this thing needs to be put away. We need to move forward. But I found out today that some alderman had called pursuant to out of Whoopla from a radio station. And again, I caution you, don't start running city business from a radio station. We run business out of this council chamber. Right now, I have Alderman D. Berg, Dan Berg, wanting a special meeting. I'm not sure if it's a special committee of the whole or what it is, to clear questions on the library board. Alderman Sigali on the library board. Alderman Serda on the contractual agreement. Alderman Ben Akron on the uh, special meeting of the Committee of the Whole. No issue discussed, just requested a meeting of the Committee of the Whole. Alderman Stefan solely on the contract issue of the library. Alderman Vanderweel on the library board. Alderman Bauman on the library board. That's seven aldermen that are asking in writing that they want a special meeting call. I'm not sure which one, but we can call it. Chief, would you ask these two gentlemen to, they're out of, they're out of order. They keep. Make it 10, I believe 10 need to request a special meeting. I am convinced and I will not, I will not start running city business out of a radio station, an entertainment show. Those that choose to, feel free to do so. I run council business out of this chambers. There's seven right now. Who else would like a special meeting with those seven? There's none. There's a motion to accept on file, 2186. Alderman Graff. Thank you. Um, just to make one more comment. You know, um, we did have some committee of the whole meetings where um, people came and asked specific questions. What could be done in this issue, if, if the citizen wanted to, is they can submit written questions to directly to you or uh, directly to any of the aldermen that they want, and they will get those answered. I would expect them to get those answers. That is an excellent suggestion, Alderman Groff, and I would address the public in this matter that if anyone has any questions regarding the library issue, specific questions, that they please submit it to the uh, Office of the Mayor. If they want to be addressed to a specific alderman, please do so. Again, if anybody wants to blame anything, blame me. I will take the blame. I will bear that weight on my shoulders. It's time to move on. Alderman Serla. Thank you, Your Honor. Just for clarification, I can only speak for myself directly. Um, I'm taking exception to um, your statements concerning the hoopla concerning WHBL. I have received calls from individuals via my phone um, concerning their issues, and that's why I bring some. I had called for a special meeting. If you would like, I don't know how they arrived at their decision to call me. Whether it was WHBL or other me, another media source, I can give you their number. But I don't take their concerns lightly. That's why I'm bringing it up. I'm not getting into the hoopla. Of everything. I'm just taking their their concerns seriously. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Your exception is noted, and please. Please forgive me if I made it in a negative tone. It's just it's an emotional issue for a lot of people. I would like for us to address the issues in this council chambers. We do it appropriately. I don't believe we need to pursue this anymore. If 10 aldermen feel that we need to, please let me know. Otherwise, we're going to move on. As there's, again, I will take the grunt for that, and that's just the way it's going to be. Alderman Susha, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I believe at this point in time, there's really not much that the council could do um, we are waiting on a decision, or not a decision, an opinion from the League of Municipalities. Now, if by chance that opinion from the League of Municipalities were to come in and say that this is illegal, 
then I think at that point in time, we need to take a closer look at the contract and decide where we're going to go from that point. I know that on our desk there was something um, from the Department of Public Instruction today, um, but I also noticed that it's signed by an individual that's a director and not an attorney. So this is not a legal opinion in any way. Um, it's just stating, uh, quoting a couple of state statutes. Um, but at this point in time, I think that as far as a contract goes, there's really not much we can do. Um, there's a separate issue in regards to um, some of the library board members. We have some issues currently sitting in the finance committee. We also have certain issues sitting in the committee of the whole. And at the appropriate time, I think those individual issues will be addressed. Thank you. And with respect to the possible illegality of a contract that the library board issued, if there were to be the case, again, please understand that is the jurisdiction of the library board. They will have to deal with that. And I'm certain that uh, Attorney McLean will be there to assist. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I received only one phone call on this whole issue, and I had talked to the lady, explained the whole situation. You said it earlier. There's only three ways we can touch the library board. First, we can cut them back at budget time to whatever level of maintenance we have to maintain. Secondly, if you make an appointment we don't like, we can say no. Thirdly, if we have cause, we can pull the library board at this time, we don't. But the point I'm trying to make is when the Common Council, the committee, the whole, we've got no jurisdiction over there. That's the library board. But the library board is, and maybe Attorney McLean could address this, Subject to the same open meetings law that this common council is subject to, their agendas are published and the same uh, protocol applies to the library board as applies to this council. The public is welcome to go to those meetings. If the public has an issue, I believe they have a public forum in their board meetings where people can come in and address whatever. If they need to ask questions, the library board members are, are, are public servants such as us. Call the library board members and ask them why. I mean, the issue is there, it's not here. Our powers are very limited. And again, like I said a little bit earlier, it's just time to put this thing to sleep. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Alderman Segali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I take exception along with Alderman Serta. We had, people had no other place to turn. Us alder people, when we talked to our own Alderman Montemayor, when she was saying no to this, we had no other options. We had a, we were trying to help the people. They were coming at us. They wanted something done. So do not blame WHBL or anybody else for what has taken place. They were the citizens' outlet. That was the station or the people that were willing to listen to them because it didn't seem like anybody else was. So this is just something that has all catapulted into something like this. and. We as older people, I guess in some ways, ought to be ashamed of ourselves because they're at, the citizens are asking for help and we can't give it to them. And that's really sad that we're not able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, the citizens are entitled to all the information that they ask for. If there is no committee meeting call or no special of the, uh, meeting of the council call, they're not left out in the dark. They can still call the mayor's office. They can call the president of the council. They will have access to anything that they need. They can go to the library board meetings. That's where it starts. They can ask questions there. They have their public forums. They will not be denied information. I guarantee you that. I have an open door policy, and I literally mean an open door policy. I see people every day on lots of issues. I welcome the people who have issues with the library to come see me and get answers. And that is a problem a lot of times, that when people don't have the right information, some people make stuff up. And I'd ask that anybody that doesn't have the correct information to please come to the mayor's office or call the president of the council, Alderman Groff, and we will provide that information, but no one in any form or manner is denying anyone of any information or the right to know. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I received a few phone calls, and um, by and large, they were very calm, and, and we talked, and they understood after I talked with them for a while. There were only two that screamed and hung up on me. But most of them, we talked for quite a while, and I think everything was settled. So there again, the citizens called me and we chatted. And we, had, we got the information straight. 
Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Mayor. Okay, motion to accept and follow 2186, Alderman Manny's statement to the Library Board. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Other matters, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 2187 is a communication from Alderman Serta regarding her concerns on how the city handles legal matters with specific reference to the recent meetings between the Mayor and Library Director Sharon Winkle regarding amendments to her contract and that certain individuals outside the designated governing body were allowed to participate in this discussion and provide assistance. I'd ask for a motion to file. So Alderman Grau. Second. Second. Under discussion. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Mayor. Um, I understand why you, you made a motion to file, but just for future references, what this really addresses is um, all department heads, not just yourself, um, in the future. And if it would lie over on the agenda, maybe we can give a quick synopsis because people keep bringing up the issue that um, Marilyn Donahue has been able to attend various meetings. And it's not just with you, I guess, other departments as well. And that way, if we could just address it, that way I can give an answer to this. Thank you, Alderman Serta. And all I would ask is this is an issue really that concerns with how I manage um, the daily operations. And again, you're quite welcome to come to my office and talk about this. And I guarantee you, you'll have your answers. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. no. Anybody, there's an ice hole? Do you want a roll call? I don't hear yes. anything. Yes, roll call, please. Madam City Clerk. <clears throat> okay, and I vote would be to file. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. No. Susha. Aye. Ten ayes, four noes. Motion carries. Please continue, Attorney McLean. 2188 is communication received by the mayor from Roop Gill, co-owner of Jake's Liquor Beer Wine Store, protesting the special assessment for bituminous resurfacing on Union Avenue. And we'll go to finance. 2187 is a report of officer by the city clerk submitting applications for private well permits. That lies over. 2190 is a communication from John Winter having concerns about issues such as the proposed opening of North 23rd, excuse me, North 21st Street. The issues regarding overtime that accumulates from the police department and the possibility of contracting with a special operations detective agency. That goes to public protection and safety. 2191 is an RO submitting communication from Jane Jaworski for alleged damages to her basement when the sewer backup due to men working outside. And that will go to risk management. 2192 is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the 2006 JAG Program Award Memorandum of Understanding between the City of Sheboygan and County of Sheboygan. That lies over. 2193 <clears throat> is communication received by the City Attorney from the League of Wisconsin Municipalities requesting that the Council consider sponsoring the League's 2006 Municipal Attorneys Institute to be held at the Blue Harbor Resort and Conference Center June 14th through 16th, 2006. That will go to finance. 2194 is a resolution amending the composition of the Building Use Committee. And that lies over. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned.
breeding mom who got the boot from Victoria's Secret minutes away. But first, did you happen to see that photo of Britney Spears taking her baby son's life in her hands? Here's Britney driving serenely along Pacific Coast Highway. The scenic but heavily traveled and dangerous main drag through Malibu. That's her bodyguard sitting alongside her. On her lap is Sean, her 16-week-old. And neither mother nor child is wearing a seatbelt. And the child is obviously not in a car seat which California law requires for every kid under six years of age or under 60 pounds. The shots remind me that just because someone is famous doesn't necessarily make them smart parents. Remember Michael Jackson, whose infamous baby dangling led some to demand he lose custody of his children? Or Australian croc hunter Steve Irwin, bringing his month-old baby to breakfast in the croc pit? Now, without sounding over-preachy, celeb parents have to remember that their kids are not props. And now for a look at the rest of the world at large. Our Lori Dew is here. Hi. Hi, Geraldo. A red flag warning in Southern California as that wildfire in Cleveland National Forest continues to burn. At least 3,500 acres have gone up in smoke and thousands of homes are being threatened. About 900 firefighters are on the scene trying to contain the raging flames. Authorities in Alabama are investigating four more Baptist churches that caught fire overnight. So far, nine churches have burned in just four days. The latest fires are especially obscene on the day civil rights widow Coretta Scott King is laid to rest. A convenience store clerk in Kansas had a would-be Robert yelling four after the clerk went at him with a golf club. The quick-thinking clerk jumped over the counter, chasing the guy out the door. His buddies are calling him Tiger Woods. Al Green singing his 1972 hit, Let's Stay Together bringing the commander-in-chief to his feet Monday night. President Bush got his groove on following a dinner at the White House honoring the Dance Theater of Harlem. And this is no circus act. Like many Americans, elephants at the Oregon Zoo are also battling the bulge, so they're getting a vigorous daily workout from zookeepers that would put Richard Simmons in a sweat. Now to those clearly in the shape of their lives, actresses Scarlett Johansson and Kira Knightley have posed nude for the cover of Vanity Fair's annual Hollywood issue, which is to be released Wednesday. Fashion superstar Tom Ford appeared alongside the women after Wedding Crasher star Rachel McAdams backed out. And a programming note now. Last week we told you about a lawsuit filed against Bishop Earl Polk, an Atlanta area minister who's being sued by a former parishioner for allegedly coercing her into a 14-year sexual relationship. After my story, we reported that despite being ravaged by cancer, the bishop was well enough to preach on the Sunday prior. We've been told that information was incorrect. Bishop Polk was not in church that Sunday and has not been since November 6th of last year. Now to a major controversy at lingerie giant Victoria's Secret. It's all over, you won't believe this, a woman's breast. Let's face it, America is obsessed with breasts. Women pay thousands to enhance them. Men pay thousands to ogle them. We even have a chain of restaurants named in their honor. But despite our obsession, if a woman exposes a breast in public, it's considered offensive. Just ask Janet Jackson, whose Super Bowl wardrobe malfunction triggered a national nervous breakdown. Even more upsetting to some, the sight of a woman breastfeeding. I don't have a problem with breastfeeding at all. I just oh, no, no, feel no. that you should be covered up. Most mothers I know cover up. The issue of breastfeeding in public took center stage last year at a Victoria's Secret store of all places. The company that has made billions celebrating the female form showed one mom the door when she asked to breastfeed her baby in a fitting room. South Carolina mom Lori Ruger was shopping at a mall in Mount Pleasant with her infant daughter when the baby began to cry. Lori Ruger went into a Victoria's Secret and asked if she could use their dressing room in an effort to have a private place to uh, nurse her uh, hungry child. Uh, and they suggested she'd be more comfortable in the public restroom. She basically was embarrassed and didn't quite understand, you know, why. She saw it as extremely unfair. Uh, for such a simple, basic act of nurturing your child. Lynn Cook of the South Carolina Breastfeeding Committee and other lactivists were so enraged by the incident, they staged a nurse in outside the store. Victoria's Secret's parent company, Limited Brands, responded with the following statement. 
We have long had a policy of allowing women to nurse their children in our stores. Although the summer 2005 incident was a misunderstanding, we are pleased that it has resulted in public discussion of this very important matter. I'm sure they understand now. I mean, they've gotten a lot of attention from this issue, and, um, you know, I think they realize the, the mistake that they made. South Carolina State Representative Chip Limehouse is introducing a bill that would ensure nursing moms the right to breastfeed in any public or private location, including a department store. 38 states already have similar legislation. We have got to just give women support so they feel comfortable to do what is, is obviously the best for their child. I mean, it is especially ironic that it is Victoria's Secret, but the law in South Carolina has to be changed, doesn't it? Well, they're certainly fighting for that, as we reported in the piece. There, there may be some tough time getting it passed because um, one of the members of the House Judiciary Committee there says he supports the concept of women being able to breastfeed anywhere, but not necessarily the mandate on businesses. Thanks, Lori. Thank you. Joining us now, Melissa Vance. Melissa is the attorney for La Leche League International, the worldwide breastfeeding organization. Hi, Melissa. Hi. What's your comment, what's your reaction to the alleged advice the sales clerk gave the woman in question here, Lori, uh, next time you want to go shopping, get a babysitter? Well, that's, it's offensive. Um, it's not always a possibility to get a babysitter, uh, particularly small infants. Um, nurse quite frequently and to get away for more than an hour can be difficult. Do you see the uh, the irony of uh, Victoria's <laughs> Secrets, the uh, the company that made billions on, uh, on breasts, uh, taking this position? Uh, absolutely, um, but that's unfortunately the issue with public breastfeeding is so many people see the breast purely as a sexual object and forget what the breast really is for, which is to nourish children. Right, they forget the, the plumbing and nutritional aspects. Uh, <laughs> Melissa, thank Absolutely. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stand by, everybody. Back in a flash. Geraldo at Large is brought to you in part by
Here's what's coming up next time. Geraldo at large, Aruba. A crack in the Holloway case?